Hello and welcome to a Team Moira Robotics design update video. In this video, I'll be going over the changes I made to my one pound ant weight robot Moray, which is your favorite robot ranked number 426. So in July of 2024, I competed at a robot combat event for the first time, and I took my robot Moray to Rabid. Moray performed very well if you ignore most of all of its fights. So yeah, Moray went 0-2 and was knocked out of the brackets, and I also lost a grudge match, even though Moray at least did a decent job in that fight. The main issues were the Fingertech Silver Spark drive motors that I was using, because they broke in every fight, and I was also very tight on weight for the event. I was never able to run the configurations that I wanted to, because I didn't have the weight for the attachments that I wanted to use. And to use the big disc or the front end attachments, I had to use a much smaller battery than the one I wanted, which reduced the speed and power of Moray's drive and weapon. So basically, I had a lot of things to improve on. This is the new Moray, and as you can see, it definitely looks different. So we can start with the external changes. One thing I knew I wanted to do is use carbon fiber in the new design to save weight. I got a comment suggesting CNC Madness as a way to order carbon fiber parts for a low price. CNC Madness was great for what I needed. They offered lots of different colors, so I chose a glossy green for the Moray Eel upright and a glossy blue for the top plate. This is going to save me a lot of painting time because I'm just going to leave it like this because I think it looks cool. So the top plate is 2 millimeter thick carbon fiber, which is about the same weight as the old TPU one that I used, but the upright is three millimeters thick, and it's a lot lighter than the old aluminum one that I used at the last event, but it still maintains its rigidity. The next big change is the shape of the chassis. So this is the one that I ran at my first event, and this is the new one. So you can see that the new one is much stubbier, and I also made the back wall a little bit less thick, as well as these interior walls by the weapon, so that cut down on a lot of weight. Another big change I made to the chassis is the holes for the top plate to bolt into. So now you can see they're just in the outer wall of the robot. But for the first version, I used these big TPU blocks, but these really weren't necessary, and getting rid of them helped cut down on the weight of the chassis. All of this weight reduction gives me the ability to run an 11.1 volt battery in all of my fights, so it'll have a lot more power than last time. This doesn't save weight, but I added a little fillet to the back, so now that if a spinner hits me there, it probably won't get as good bite, so hopefully there'll be less of a chance of the hit breaching the chassis. The final change to the general setup of the robot is the drive motors. Like I said, the Fingertech Silver Spark motors broke in all three of my fights, so I needed to get rid of those. Get out! The Wicked Slasher and Destructo Shredder teams at Rabid both recommended repeat robotics motors, and I decided to use the brushed repeat motors because they were cheaper than brushless, and they already work with the tiny ESCs that I already have a bunch of. You can also see that they're just smaller than the Fingertech Silver Sparks, they're still the same weight, but they're just more compact, which is nice. And that's really it for the things I changed for this event. I was perfectly happy with the wheels that I used last time, as well as the weapon setup. Stick around. Now I'll go over the different configurations that Moray can use. Moray has two options for its weapon. It can either use the big titanium disc, which you see here, or the smaller titanium blade that I used in two of my fights last time. There are two upright options. I have the lighter carbon fiber one or the heavier aluminum one. And then I have three front end attachments. So I have the long hinged forks. I have the smaller static forks and I have the wedges. And I redesigned the wedges after the last event. This is the one I used previously. And the new ones, I think, might be a little bit better at deflecting hits, but also, more importantly, they just look better. I don't really like the way these ones looked. These look cooler, I feel like. If I fight a vertical spinner, I'll use the big disc, and the front end attachments will depend on the specific opponent. The long forks can be used against an opponent that's very low to the ground or sloped on a bunch of sides, like a Viper kit, 
or if I want to outreach the opponent with my forks, if I was fighting something like Air Raider. The small forks can be used if I still want a lot of reach with the spinner, but I also want to prevent the opponent from getting underneath me. So I would use this against something like Overdraft. I could also just run nothing on the front if I feel like I want maximum reach with the weapon, or if my opponent's chassis is high off the floor like Carlton 379, and the forks wouldn't really do anything. When the big disc is being used, I'll have to run the carbon fiber upright for weight purposes. If I fight a horizontal spinner to allow for weight, I'll use the small blade, and then use the aluminum upright, which will be better at taking hits probably, as well as the two wedges to protect my internals and hopefully deflect some hits. Before I end the video, I did test the new Moray without any front end attachments. It was able to deliver some huge hits with that 11.1 volt battery giving it extra power, and it got revenge on a silver spark motor. It ripped up a tennis ball, it cut through an old TPU chassis very well and threw it into the air, and it even bent an 8th inch thick AR500 steel upright, and I was very impressed with that. The weapon clearly does hit extremely hard, and also the gyroscopic forces created by the spinning disc caused the robot to flip itself and do some weird stuff when it landed on its weapon. And this can show that the new Moray can self-write very easily, which is something that I really struggled with at the last event. Running into the wall will flip it very quickly since the wheels stick out farther towards the back this time, and then the disc hitting the floor will sometimes flip it back upright too. And once the chassis flipped back upright when I drove quickly in the opposite direction, all of this means that the new Moray has a powerful weapon and that it can do a pretty cool victory dance. So that's it for this design update. I've already signed Moray up for the Rabbit event on November 23rd, Turkey Brawl. Depending on when it happens, and if it happens, I might also try to compete at Macro before the end of the year. And then finally, I'm definitely going to enter Moray into Motorama next February, and potentially a Beetleweight if I can get it together in time. So thank you for watching this design update on Moray.